Hi everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. It's Sarah Scully, once again, and I'm sharing another tip on natural dyeing this week. Um, as you may recall from the last episode, I did a whole slew of these um, natural dye experiments last summer, and so I have quite a few recipes um, to share with you. Um, and one update I wanted to share before I get into today's main topic um, was an update on the beet dyed yarn that I had done uh, some time ago. And I'll link to that episode in the show notes in case you're, you're interested in my recipe. Um, but I mentioned there that I had not fully tested this for color fastness in terms of light exposure. And since that time I did do an experiment, I put this skein um, in the window and let it sit there for about a week. And it has faded to some degree. Um, it's not severe, but you can see, for example, this area here would have been exposed to the light. And over here, you have a much darker, uh, more saturated color. Um, it may not show up well on this camera, but I'll take a picture and include that as well. Um, so it doesn't look like the beat is as color fast as I would have hoped, but it's, it's not terrible. Um, it definitely did fade, but it didn't completely wash out. So, sort of a mixed result. Um, I was reading some more on this, and apparently whatever color compounds are in beets um, just aren't light fast, and so it's not usually recommended to dye with. But I'm still pleased with the yarn that I got, and maybe I'll just use it on things that I don't plan to wear out in the sunshine too much. Um, so there's that. So th today's episode is really focused on another... Um, flower-based dye from a flower called Tansy. Um, and a shout out to my friend Amy Stender. She is um, an amazing crafter. I'm actually hoping to get her on the show at some point. Um, so hi Amy, and thanks for turning me on to Tansy and actually giving me some Tansy to play with last summer. So Tansy's um, a very tall growing, multi-flowered, um, kind of woody textured wildflower. And um, I think it's pretty easy to grow. You can grow it from seed. Um, it has these very interesting looking, almost prehistoric looking flower shapes, like little buttons all over it. And that's the part of the plant that has the dye. So to make a dye from Tansy, I just harvested um, all the little buttons with my scissors. And um, it's very similar to the goldenrod method or the jewelweed method. You're going to simmer the flower material in warm water for say an hour or so to distract to extract as much dye as you can um, and then strain that out and put the water back on the heat add your prepared fiber and cook it for a little while um, one thing that was interesting so I had read that um, tansy was supposed to color shift from gold into green tones with a pH change and supposedly that works um, by adding ammonia. So I did try this, um, but I, I didn't get any kind of a green uh, shade on my, on my yarn. Um, there is some chance I didn't raise the pH enough, um, but because wool doesn't really get along in an alkaline environment very much, I was afraid to go too far. So I might have raised it up to say a 9.5 or a 10 pH, um, but I was afraid of really damaging the, the wool at that point. Um, the effect of the ammonia did seem to intensify the color of the gold, so it came, got, gave it kind of a richer tone, um, but it didn't, didn't turn green at all. Um, so that was interesting, Just and in, that may have something to do with my water. You know, I'll have to do some more reading and, and maybe another experiment this summer. Um, but it did give a beautiful yellow tone, um, and I would definitely use it again. It was a very easy thing to dye with. I think it would be something that you could raise at home. If you, if you don't have something like goldenrod on a piece of land that you have access to, um, tansy would be something easy to cultivate in a home garden, and so you could use that to make yellow. And I'm sure it overdyes well, um, too, to make other colors. So I'll continue to play with Tansy and experiment and let you know how that goes. If you try any of these dye experiments, please do leave a comment uh, either here on the video or on the blog, which I'll link to in the show notes, and let me know how it's going. Thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying these videos. Uh, leave a comment and let us know what you think. Thanks so much.